Hello Aquarius Rising and welcome to your September astrology and tarot forecast. Um, I'm Lisa Merrifield with Trails Edge Astrology and on this channel I give grounded practical advice so that you can make the best decisions possible for you. If you haven't listened to my September overview you might hop back and do that first. I go over six transits that I think are going to be most significant this month and um, and I also uh, linked to a journal page where I have the date and the transit and some space for you to make some notes on uh, you know what the archetypal um, language looks like for that transit and then what it how it shows up for you um, because astrology is a cyclical language and patterns come back around it's really interesting to make note of how you felt during a transit or how something showed up for you um, in order to think about how it's going to go what it might look like going forward. So if you want that, uh, it's linked from that September video, and I'll put a link to it down in the notes below so you can grab that. All right. Um, of course, as always, if uh, something here resonates with you, would you please give me a like, a subscribe, a comment, a share? Uh, it helps me get my message out, grow the channel. It helps me know that you're out there and I really appreciate that. I love seeing the comments um, to know that this is useful or how things are showing up for you. So if you're willing to do that for me, I would greatly appreciate it. All right, let's talk about transits and how they're showing up in your chart. So there are two that I want to specifically focus on this month before we dive into the tarot uh, to, um, to kind of modify the message. So the first one is Pluto moving back into Capricorn. So Pluto has been in Capricorn for, um, well, since about 2008, 2009, Pluto moved into Capricorn. It was in Capricorn solidly until 2023, and it's been seesawing back and forth between Capricorn and Aquarius in the last year, two years, year and a half. Um, so for you, when Pluto was in Capricorn, when Pluto is in Capricorn, it's in your 12th house. So there's something about healing or surrender or spiritual growth, um, maybe some inhibitions or murkiness that has been um, that has been asking for transformation in your life, that, that's been asking for you to dig deep and kind of like look underneath the surface, um, find the hidden gems. Usually Pluto's work... Um, puts pressure on us until we take the action that we knew all along we needed to take, but that was scary for whatever reasons or that, um, or sometimes we don't know we need to take it. Sometimes it, sometimes what happens is everything else has to fall away and then we can move into whatever is next. Now, how this showed up for you between 2008 and now um, with Pluto in Capricorn really depends on what other planets you have in Capricorn and what other planets you have in, in Aries, Cancer, or Libra. Um, if you have placements in those areas, this may have been really, really sharp and really defined. If you don't, it might have just been a looser, um, you know, a looser feeling like you needed to, you need to step into this, this healing or surrender energy. Uh, but you'll have to look at your chart to see that. You might also look at where Saturn is in your chart that can help kind of confirm and, and guide the message around how that showed up. So I'm mentioning all of this because Pluto moved back into Capricorn on September 1st, and it will be there from September 1st to November 19th. And this is the last time that Pluto will be in Capricorn for about 250 years. So Whatever you were working on in that Capricorn space, whatever 12th house kinds of issues you have been grappling with, this is the, the final chance for soul's evolution in this space. And don't, don't read more into that than necessary. Um, your soul has lots of evolving to do and, and you are doing, you're on your perfect path. You are doing the work you need to do. Um, but... If there is work, you know, if there is something that you haven't gotten to or that you know you need to make change in that 12th house space of your chart, um, this is a time to do it. This is our kind of our last chance to figure out how to live into that Pluto and Capricorn, um, into that real authentic version of yourself. And um, 
and as I say, don't don't put more pressure on yourself than necessary. It's um, it's you know it's it's very individual, and again, you have to look at other parts of your chart to know how it's showing up for you. But if there's work you need to do, if there's something you need to finish, now is the time to finish it. Um, another way that it can show up is sometimes as a test. So sometimes a situation that mirrors a situation that you have been going through or working through between 2008 and about 2023 um, will show up again. And you will have an opportunity to do it differently because of what you have learned, to handle it differently, to to uh, surrender to it differently, to to be more holistic. Yeah, whatever whatever it is, however it's showing up, there there could be an opportunity to um, to do something differently. And so that's, um, that's another piece of this puzzle, another piece that might show up for you. And then of course, in, um, on November 20th, Pluto goes into Aquarius where it will be for the next 20 years. So right now you've been working on healing and surrender. And for the next 20 years, you will be working on like how you bring that into your identity, um, your appearance and actions, all of those kinds of things, how people perceive you has the potential for transformation over the next 20 years. And again, don't, don't read more into it than necessary. You have all the skills you need to, to do the work. Essentially all Pluto wants you to do is do the work, do whatever transformation you're being called to, um, to do. Um, and again, as with Pluto and Capricorn, it depends on what planets you have in Aquarius. You have a rising sign in Aquarius, so it is so it is significant. When Pluto hits your rising sign, you will feel some desire or some pressure to transform into some into who you are authentically. Um, so so ease into that and see um, yeah see how it feels. So it's significant. Um, the other transit I wanted to talk about is the eclipses. Eclipses are always intense times of the year and they do bring pressure. They do bring um, bring like karmic change. They're kind of like karmic course corrections, if you will. Um, and this time, this eclipse is in Virgo and Pisces. So the nodes, the, the eclipses are where the nodes of fate are and the nodes of fate are in Aries and Libra. Um, but this eclipse is out of sign in Virgo and Pisces, which puts it in your second and eighth house. So, um, so that means there's probably going to be some invitation to change around your finances, your resources, your possessions, your values, how you spend your time, treasures, and talents, any of those kinds of things. Um, there is the potential for some illumination with this eclipse, you know, some like aha moment or some, um, oh shit moment. If <laughs> it can happen that way. Uh, Anne Orley describes eclipses as like a strobe light. The lights, the lights are on, you're going along, the lights go off, they come back on and everything has shifted. So that can happen during an eclipse. Now it may happen around the 17th and it may happen over a longer period of time. It just, it, it depends. Eclipses play out, uh, you know, over, over time. Um, this eclipse is in Virgo and Pisces. It's the first one in Virgo and Pisces, um, but we will have more in Virgo and Pisces. So the eclipses will, on October, will go back into that Aries and Libra part of your chart, which is the third and ninth house part of your chart, which is your mind, your mental, how you think about things. Um, so this is a little glimpse into what eclipses in your, your second and eighth house are likely to look like. So we'll see again, let me know in the comments. If you, if there's something happening that really resonates with this, I would sure like, um, like to know that, like to, um, like to dialogue with you about what, what that looks like. And, um, with that, let's pull some cards and see how that helps us kind of frame up what might be going on and what your opportunities are. So we are going to read from the Spheres of Heaven deck, tarot deck, and then I'm going to pull a card from the Sunflower Plant Spirit, this book is too big, Sunflower Plant Spirit Oracle. All right, I'm going to pause, shuffle, and then I'll be right back. All right, I am back. 
So Aquarius, um, your opportunity for September is the sun. And the sun is all about abundance and heat and radiance and shining as bright as you can. And um, I would guess that with Pluto, um, you know, dancing into your first house, dancing into you near your ascendant, you have likely been feeling some some trepidation, some like the pressure of change has probably been coming up for you, at least in some capacity. Um, but this card says that it's all good, that there is abundance, there is growth, there is life. Um, you know, it could also be around around that house of money. The eclipses are happening in your money house, so it might be something about money and resources. But but regardless, there's some abundance. There's abundance available to you this month, and a lot of it. The sun is a really powerful, strong card. So a lot of abundance available um, in September and likely beyond. But so if you've been feeling that Pluto in your first house and it's and it feels heavy, um, you know, maybe maybe um, maybe there's a different way of looking at things or maybe maybe you can see maybe maybe this is an invitation to shift and really look at the at the good or there could just be something really fabulous headed your way. All right. For your challenge, you got the Nine of Swords. And the Nine of Swords is really about nightmares and anxiety. And so I would guess that you are going through some um, some really tough times and trying to, uh, you know, figure out where it is you're going. That There's a lot of worry. Um, maybe there's worry around money. Maybe there's worry around identity. Um, you know, maybe maybe there's worry. Maybe there's health worries. Any of the houses that that these this big energy is impacting, um, there could be worry. And as an Aquarius rising, I suspect that you can really get in your head. Um, you know, Aquarian energy is fixed air energy, and so really is so able to see the ideal and so able to really understand like the true potential and 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 how things really should be. And so sometimes that can cause some rumination and, and some grief and anxiety. And so I think the challenge this month is to, is to find the place for that and, um, and not, not get stuck in it in, in to, um, not get stuck in it in, in, so that you don't move forward so that you're, that you, you know, there's a place we're ruminating and then and then there's a place to move on and realize that there is abundance, there is beauty, there's a lot out there for you. All right, and your um, your to-do list. What should you do? You have the Knight of Wands. And the Knight of Wands, uh, so knights are about movement and taking action or communicating. Um, and the Knight of Wands is about uh, passion and creativity and intuition and innovation and all those really like juicy beautiful kinds of kinds of activities. The Knight of Wands um, is sometimes a little reckless, sometimes moves fast to get what he needs. And so so I think the invitation is, you know, there is abundance. You may be worrying, but but you can move. There movement is afoot and and go for it. There's support behind you. Um, there is um, yeah, the adventure awaits. You can take the risk. And um, and interestingly, while, while I was shuffling, I got a volunteer card. I got the Six of Swords, which is about success, which is about moving on after loss. So there's been loss. There's been things that haven't gone well, but success is on the horizon. You are moving into, into a better waters. So that, those are the tarot cards. And I did not pull the... Um, Oracle card. Let's do that really quickly. Let's see what your plant medicine is this month. And for you, it is the calendula, which is a gorgeous plant. It says, our thoughts and our words have great creative power, both positive and negative, for ourselves and others. Calendula helps soothe our thoughts and words with warmth and compassion and understanding so that there is a balance between the assertiveness and the receptiveness in communicating with others. 
which I think is so beautiful, you know, given given that there's some worry and anxiety going on that that there's some some balance. So there's a there's a balm. There's this there's something soothing. Um, calendula like may, is great in tea. So if you're if you're at all inclined to um, partake in plant medicine, you might get some calendula tea. Uh, it's also just a really pretty beautiful bright yellow flower. Um, so you may see it around. At least it's blooming here at the moment. All right, Aquarius Rising, I hope this was helpful. If it was, would you please like, subscribe, comment, or share? Help me um, share my message and let me know that you're out there and this was useful to you. All right, I'll see you soon.